Most gaming videos tell you how to get more powerful, defeat dangerous enemies, get the best weapons, exploit game mechanics, uncover secrets, complete challenges, and so much more to optimize your effectiveness. This is not that kind of video. No, instead this video is going to show you the worst idea I have ever had in Borderlands 3. It involves the unholy union of a shield and artifact that can be great by themselves, but prove crippling when used together. The video game version of a marshmallow and tuna fish sandwich. Let's get familiar with our two main culprits in this truly stupid caper. To start with, we have the Rough Rider Shield, which you will notice boasts a whopping zero shield points. However, this shield makes up for its complete lack of, well, shielding by boosting your health points by 35% and providing a 23% reduction to all damage. For a health-focused character, this can be pretty great. Of course, Moe's really loves her shields, which is why I typically stick with my Transformer. Now let's talk about that artifact, which is called Deathless. I know, that name should instill more confidence. Typically, this would be pretty great with a normal shield, doubling your capacity, increasing your recharge rate, and decreasing delay. However, the trade-off here is that it reserves all but one health, meaning you can't increase your health above that. If I were playing Moe's on the Shield of Retribution skill tree, which I'm really not, this could prove devastating, since she receives less damage when her shields are active and gets damage bonuses the lower her health is from maximum. Now, what happens when we take these two and combine them together? Well, as the name of the video suggests, it's not good. Since Rough Rider has no shield capacity, Deathless doesn't give me any shield bonus. Similarly, as Deathless sets me to one health regardless of my maximum, Rough Rider can't give me a health boost. Yeah, I take 23% less damage, but that doesn't really help when your health is one. This combination is a really great way to get yourself killed repeatedly in Borderlands 3, as you can obviously see when I start battling anything. All it takes is one hit to go into fight for your life mode. The silver lining here is that I no longer fear death. And you don't really have to worry about how difficult the boss battle is, because literally the little things can kill you instantaneously, so what does it matter? But I know what you're thinking. What happens when you jump into Iron Bear? Well, actually, Iron Bear is still awesome. The mech doesn't suffer the same penalties from this combo, but does seem to take less damage and boast a higher armor rating. So, theoretically, there's an effective build in here if you never get out of Iron Bear. Of course, then you get out for five seconds and die. So... Trade-offs! These, these are trade-offs, folks. Alright, this is the worst idea I can come up with for Borderlands 3. If you somehow found a worser idea, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Bye. So when I first tried this, I thought that maybe I had found a hidden exploit by using these two because I didn't seem to be dying at all. Uh, even in the midst of these very large firefights, I'm uh, actually at the end of the DLC for Love Guns and Tentacles right here. So if I'm gonna take damage anywhere, it would probably be here. And yet, uh, still standing. Nothing seemed to really be uh, taking me down. I wasn't going into fight for your life mode. And I thought maybe I had found like a glitch because no one was stupid enough to try this. But then I started dying a lot and realized that, no, I, it, it was just dumb luck that I made it through this section alive in one piece. So, I mean, I felt good for a minute. And that's something. Small victories, you know?